So in this video, we're going to show you the processes needed to install the perfect Tobermore driveway. So before starting your driveway project, it's important to be aware of any planning and water drainage regulations in your area. It's essential and a must that you check out all the services in your driveway, i.e. gas, water, electric, and even oil. To install a driveway correctly, you will need the following tools, equipment, and PPE. Some other materials you may need. In this situation, we're using an MOT Type 1, or what you would know as 40 mil to dust, or blinded. Sharp sand for the laying course, kiln dry sand for jointing the blocks, sand and cement for concreting the curbs. You may also require drainage channels and recessed manhole covers. All these materials can be purchased from your local builders merchants. The first stage is to excavate the area to the required depth. To calculate the depth of the excavation required, add the depth of the block paver, 30 millimeter thickness of sharp sand and laying course and the depth of your sub base. A typical driveway will require a sub base of between 125 millimeter and 150 millimeter, depending on your ground conditions. If the ground is soft, you will require a greater depth of sub base. Always ensure the finished level of the driveway is at least 150 millimeter below the damp proof course of the house. When installing a driveway, it's so important to maintain the integrity of the driveway in itself. And we do this by using edge restraints. In this case, the edge restraints are a Tobermore Tegler Curb Large. To ensure the alignment and the finish level, we're using a string line. It's so important that your curbs are installed correctly. In this case, we're using a six to one mix, six sharp, one cement as a semi-dry. That semi-dry is gonna ensure that your blocks don't tilt one way or another way, and when you tap them down, they stay in place. We've got our mortar on our curb brace now, and we've got to make sure that when we're tapping down, we're tapping down sufficiently enough to ensure that there's a good bed underneath. Try and hold your curb in position like so, tapping it down with your mallet, but always make sure and ensure that you use a bolt level, because your bolt level is going to make sure that the top of your curb is touching your line and you need to get down and have a look and see what you're doing. Well, here we are. We've laid our curbs, they're in place, but now we want the curbs to stay in position. And we do that by putting a concrete mix on the back of the curbs, haunching it off, smoothing it off, ensuring you don't get any sideways movement. Now we can install the sub-base layer. For a 115 millimeter depth of sub-base, you should install two 75 millimeter layers. Spread the first layer of aggregate and rake it level. Compact it fully using a vibrating plate compactor. It is important to lay your paving with a slight fall. This means laying it to a very slight slope to allow surface water to run off the surface to drainage gullies, channels, or soft landscaping. For block paving on a driveway, this is usually a minimal fall of one in 60. This means one centimeter of fall for every 60 centimeters of distance. This means if your driveway is five meters long, you should convert this to mm, 5,000 millimeters, and divide by 60 which means the driveway will fall 85 millimeters approximately over its length. This fall should be created in the sub-base, not the laying course. To create the fall in the sub-base, place a string line on the finished level of the driveway at the highest point. 
and run it to a stake at the lower end of the driveway. Use a streamlined spirit level to check its level. At the low end of the driveway, measure down the streamline 80 millimeters. Place a wooden peg at this level. This now indicates where the sub-base material needs to be brought up to. You can do these in various locations on the driveway to guide you. So here we are. We've got a sub-base in place. It's compacted and now it's time to put in our bed and course. For this, we're going to be using a sharp sand and it's so important that your sharp sand has enough moisture content and the best way to test that to see if it forms a ball. So what Dave's doing here now, he's setting in the screed rails. The screed rails he's using in this case is a 30 millimeter rail. What that 30 millimeter rail would do will to ensure that he uses the correct depth of sand that is required for the bedding course. So as you can see, Dave's got the rails firmly in place. He's packing the sand either side of the rail to ensure that, that we don't get any movement. But what we need to do now, we need to use a string line from A to B and to ensure that we haven't got any sagging in the rails throughout the distance. So what we're doing now, Dave is ensuring that the rail is to the correct height with the string line. So what Dave has done now, he's set up the second line from threshold to threshold. He's got the screed rail underneath that line and he's checking that we have the correct depth. Right, okay, so what we have here now, you can see the laying course slowly coming to life. We've got the two screeding rails either side running parallel, and Dave is using a screeding bar and floating as he goes to achieve the required level. And as you can see, he's pulling the screeding bar over the screeding rails as he goes, and it's leaving a perfectly smooth finish. So what we're doing now, we're pulling the screed rail back and it's creating a void. So we put the extra sand in to ensure that there's no voids in our laying course. And what we're doing in this case, we're using a plastic float to ensure a good level. Filling the void as we go. So the laying course is finally in. We're at the correct level. The block now is five mil above the finished level. During the final compaction process, the blocks then will compact to the finished height. Well, as you can see, Dave and Ryan are making rapid progress with this Tobermore Tegler Bracken. And it's looking good. It comes in three different sizes, but it's important that you don't have any straight joints. So it's important to recognize that once we've prepared our base and it's all good to go, we can actually lay our blocks as we go. And remember, we are not gonna compromise our laying course. So top tip when you're laying your blocks, it's important that when you're placing your block in position, that it goes down in a flat horizontal format. And the reasons for this, let me show you. If you put it at an angle like so, and you let it go, what happens is the sand comes between the, the previous block that you've laid and the new block, creating a gap, and eventually your rows will run out. These blocks have a spacer nib, 
which creates a joint allowing you to brush your sand in at a later point. Top tip when you're laying your paving to ensure the alignment of your paving is every couple of meters use a string line to ensure the alignment is correct. So we're at that point where we have to start cutting the blocks for your driveway. So what we have here, we've got a smaller block ready. We take out the previous laid block, put in the small block, overhang your block you've just taken out, mark across, and that is your waste. What we have here, we have a small cut. What we don't want is small cuts on an outer edge because they could be compromised in some way. So what we need to do, we need to increase the size. So we let take out the previous laid unit, place in a smaller unit, and that's increased the cut size without compromising the joints. If you're not confident using a disc cutter, the other alternative, you can use a block splitter. So we've laid our blocks, we've done our cuts, we've cleared the drive of any debris. Now we're going to brush in our kiln dried sand. So now we're ready to compact our driveway and we're going to do that using this compactor blade. But for best practice, it's essential to use a rubber mat. This is going to avoid any scratching and damaging the surface of your paving. Well, it's done and all that's left to do is to brush off the sand and we've completed. It may be necessary in the near future to come back and just top up with some sand in some of the joints if necessary. The driveway is completed and this is a personal favourite of mine. The Tobemore Tegler block with its aged antique appearance works perfectly with the charcoal set. You've got the best of both worlds here, the traditional and the modern, perfect for every home. So if you're a home improver or a DIYer, I'm sure you can give it a go. But if you haven't got the confidence to give it a go, go to the Tobermore website where you'll be able to find a list of approved Tobermore installers in your area.